This here is a forklift motor I recently acquired. Its plan was to be kind of hard to move with my hand here. Its plan was to be installed as a wind generator. But the problem I'm going to be having is that it doesn't have any permanent magnets. And it's got brakes in the back, so it would have been perfect. I would have been able to engage those when the wind's too strong to stop the, the blades from blowing themselves up. We'll crank it up here in a minute. 24 volt. And drive gear can be removed, which it will be. I'm trying to decide if it's going to go on a go kart or what's going to happen to it. Crank it up here. Got us a never start battery. The brushes aren't sparking anymore. What was wrong with it when I got it? It was going to the trash originally because the brushes, uh, when they were burned up, and I had the emery cloth, the the what do you call it, the communicator there, they contact the shaft. I forget the name. It's been a while. I had the emery cloth it and sand it, and I flattened the tips of the brushes and greased them and therefore let the motor break in again and they let oil pour on it do a wet break in couldn't do a water break in with this motor because then you gotta submerge it which just wouldn't be good for the bearings in there or there and apparently it's got a shaft seal um, I'd say roughly it'd probably put out about 15 maybe 20 horsepower did it and I'm only running it on 12 volt battery I did two and used my truck battery and toppled off the tailgate Use the brakes. Hey, got brakes. I like that. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it right now. But it can't be used as a generator, as I said, because it's got, I guess, induction coil around there. Instead of having a permanent magnet, it's got electric magnets around it. Which, actually, you can run it just like this off the brushes. These two rear terminals are for the brushes, the two front ones are for the, the magnets that surround the core and it, it wants to run but it runs real weak when you do this and of course it's not going to do it right now because it's not charged you do that charge the coil now it'll run well it's just really weak so you saw I did though I did that I have this jumper wire here going there took it in a series where it's not doing anything right now I'll even unplug it to prove it and what it did was it charged the outer casing with the magnetic field. To, that's what's running off of right now. Well, it's actually probably getting the, the armature, armature is hot. Take two hands to do this here. Put this wire back up. crank it up again the way it's supposed to be hooked up. And it is reversible. Which I drained our battery a little bit. That charger is charging our battery. So we're running this. Okay, it'll probably turn over a diesel engine. This way, run it backwards. Grab that thing, that'll hurt. Oh, she runs. 
Look at your hands. It's forkliftmotors.com. Chapman, Dallas, Texas. It's 1935. Chapman Electric. Brush number B100. Like I said, I resurfaced the brushes and everything and flattened them. I've done a couple motor overhauls in my life. And mainly big AC motors. I kind of wonder what happens if you run this on 100 volts. Probably burn it up. Well, thanks for watching and uh, a couple walk around of it, a couple shots. Not nothing, nothing much special. Just a gigantic, tip, typical DC motor. Probably weighs near 100 pounds. You can see in there, I just put one of these vents, I resurfaced it with some sandpaper. But what I find out weird here, how where the brushes are located. They're located in a 40, a 90 degree angle from the shaft. There's one here, and one directly 90 degrees from it. Well, hope to get some comments and stuff on this video. And find out more information about these motors. Uh, thank you all for watching.